Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I want to go ahead and just give you guys kind of like a league update uh, with where I've been at. I haven't really thought of any YouTube content of recently. I still need to do like that shaper guide and whatnot. Um, but I'll probably try to do it in Standard League with my other character because I don't want to risk this character right now, which is my low-life RF Guardian. So let me just keep you guys up to date with what's been going on. Um, so after my, I guess, my 96 RF death, I kind of just started to just play a bit casually because, you know, we've got a beta coming up and whatnot, so I'm not really trying to push myself too far. Um, but I decided on this character I wanted to do a little bit of a different approach on this low-life RF Guardian, who is currently level 93. Uh, and I'll show you guys a little bit of what I did. Now, I did kind of vaguely go over this in some of the video guides. Uh, of course, I can't instantly release content of what I'm doing or else I fuck myself over and I can't even do it myself because the price goes up by like 10 times the value. So what I decided in this setup is I'm using a level 20 purity. Well, basically three level 20 purities. Purity of lightning, purity of ice, and purity of fire. My fire is 21 because I vaulted a 21, but I'll flip it and sell it and then get a 20. And I bought a level 4 in power for like 360 chaos or some shit. And what this allows me to do is actually not need any unset rings. Uh, which means that because I don't need any unset rings, I can use opal rings. Where's my essence tab? I can use opal rings which roll up to 25% fire damage implicit. And then on top of the 25% fire damage, you can roll up to like, what, a 35% increase. Uh, with essences, which is what I've been using, which are the are these the anger ones. Yeah, it's the deafening essence of anger. I think it's called. I forgot the last one, and that rolls like up to thirty-five percent fire damage. So if you think about it, if you put both of them together, that's seventy percent. Seventy plus fifty is what one twenty. That's an extra one hundred and twenty percent increased damage uh, from two properly crafted rings. And I want to go ahead and try that out. I also did some playing around with crystal belts and crystal belt testing. Um, and in fact, if you have a crystal belt rolled within like a high int roll, so essentially if you essence craft um, with, I forgot which one it is, there's one that specifically is Intel for belts. Uh, I think it's int. This one. If you craft this one essentially with the highest tier, so let's actually, let's do this right now. Okay, with a deafening essence of spite. The Deafening Essence of Spite can actually net you more energy shield. Um, it can net you more energy shield than a normal Baited Breath, which is really cool. Let's see if I can get a good roll here. Uh, that is a uh, dank poo-poo roll, unfortunately. But yeah, because the intel essentially gives you percentage energy shield, 56 intelligence is what, like 11% ES? Plus you would have like the 80 flat roll, plus you would have the flat roll, and then you could have like flask effect, or sorry, flask duration, etc. Uh, so this is definitely something I want to look into as well. Essence crafting is pretty fun, really fucking expensive though. Um, I guess furthermore, I still do like Baited Breath. I think Baited Breath is really sick because the increased energy shield recharge when you chain Vault Discipline just gives you like an extra 1500 ES regen during breaches. So I kind of think like Baited Breath is also totally fine and there's no need to spend fucking 500 Chaos Essence crafting a Crystal Belt. But sometimes it's fun to waste currency, you know? I think it's always fun to learn the limits of your character and figure out, you know, the benefits of one thing versus another instead of just staring at it and never knowing. Um, helmet's pretty shit, it's 282 ES, this definitely needs to be upgraded. Shield is 430 ES with no intelligence roll, this needs to get upgraded. These gloves are just absolute shit, they need to get upgraded. Uh, this ring has a suffix open, but I'm probably gonna sell it for a couple exalts because I don't need it anymore. Um, yeah, there's just no need for it, and the multi-mod is 2x itself, and then the percentage ES is at least an exalt to craft. So this should probably go for like 4 or 5 exalts. Uh, which will help me buy out my other opal ring and then craft that up. This ring doesn't even have a percentage ES on it, which I won't be adding a percentage ES because I'll be using opal rings. Um, so we can still easily hit like 15.3k ES uh, just with upgrading our ring and then switching up some other gear 16 and then potentially 17 back up to 18k energy shield. So that's pretty much this character. Um, and the only thing I really did to change it was I went down and picked up Arsonist instead of Quick Recovery. Before I had Quick Recovery, uh, which was right here, I decided to drop that. And if I were to do Shaper, I think the only difference I would do for Shaper is I would essentially just use a, uh, I think a Dream Fragments to prevent myself from being chilled or frozen. Um, 
And I was thinking of doing like a mana variant, but it's just not worth it because all of these jewels that have increased damage on it is just, they're so valuable. They're so strong, you can't drop them. You need, you essentially need uh, damage everywhere you can get it if you want to do Shaper effectively and not feel like your character is shit. Uh, I also need a respec into the curse effect here, but there's no point in me doing this until Shaper as well, uh, because regular mobs you don't really need this extra curse effect for, because this only works for flammability. And that's pretty much this character. Um, there's really not much else to be doing. I don't know what I'm playing in 3.0 yet. I probably won't be playing Low Life RF again. Uh, I'll probably try a new build, um, so we'll see what else we can do that's pretty OP and whatnot. Um, I do really like this character, but there's only so much you can play a character sometimes. Uh, same thing kind of like with the League. I've been going pretty crazy, uh, si well, not recently, but since Breach League, I've been going pretty crazy. And I'm kind of relaxing right now. I might hop to another game for a little bit until, like, Fall of Oriath comes, or the beta comes, and then go jump into that. Um, so I'm kind of just chilling. Let me know what kind of content you guys want on my YouTube for PoE-related, because I'm running out of ideas a little bit. I'm sure I can think of some more, but just in general, if there's anything off the top of your head. Of course, if I've already released content on it, I can't do a duplicate video because... I mean, there's not really any point. And then to run you guys over with the other character I've been playing, which was the uh, the Miner, the Poison EK Miner. Uh, this character is like super retard squishy, and I tried doing a different variant this go around with Roth's Reach. I actually don't like the chain. Um, it doesn't hit nearly as far. Like it still is hitting like off the screen, but the chain just doesn't. It doesn't feel good at all because uh, whenever there's like say like 15 mobs or like a shrine. With my Quill Rain setup, it would just pierce and kill everything. With the Chain setup, it doesn't do that whatsoever. Um, so definitely going to redo that. But the thing is, is I'm just going to use Void Walkers. And Void Walkers will basically give me free pierce as long as I have phasing up. And I'll use a Ascent from Flesh, which means that if I have went phasing recently, I get the Spell Dodge. Or whatever it gives you, regular dodge. And then it gives you movement speed on top of that. And it's just overall a really good belt. Uh, so I think Ascent from Flesh will be pretty nice on this character. And this guy is good to go, I think level 69, I'll try to transition to CI, and when I go CI, I'll also have my Void Walkers, which means I'll swap back to a Quill Rain, so I'll get an additional 70% projectile speed, although I will have to drop my career reward, so we'll lose 30%, but overall we're still gaining 40% projectile speed, um, which should be totally fine. Uh, I think that this character actually has really high scaling and can still potentially get much, much, much stronger. Especially if I buy like a, uh, what is it, a projectile damage helmet for EK. Although I'm kind of low on currency because I've been like buying all the retarded expensive items, testing stuff out. But I mean, that's the fun of the game sometimes, you know. You have to push your characters to the limits. Uh, that's pretty much going to be it. I don't know what other builds I'm doing in the league right now. I might play an attack-based character, but for now I'm pretty happy with the characters that I've made. Um... And yeah, that's pretty much about it. Like I said, I just kind of kind of wanted to keep you guys updated with what's been going on. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And for people who are going to ask, this flask, Lavinia Spirit, is a flask I used back in Nemesis League. Which basically what it does is when you use skills, it doesn't cost any mana. So it basically gives you like free mana during the skill cost. So check this out. So for leveling mines, it's really great when they normally have like ridiculous mana costs because you can seven like a detonate mines totem and just start dropping them and you just kill anything when you're leveling. It doesn't matter what boss it is, it'll just die. It doesn't matter if Ab exhaust spawns, it'll just die. Uh, so anyway, that's pretty much it, like I said before. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.